welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is Water Over Thirsty Lands. Now, here's Pastor Carrie. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for the music and the, the story. I like that story. Be responsible for the little things, right? Um, well, we've been going through our summer series of a um, drought-resistant Christian. And, um, and today we're going to talk about God's filtering system. Um, you know, we've last, last week we talked about how if we trust in the Lord, have faith in the Lord, um, it's, it's, it's a start of making sure we're drought-resistant Christians. My plants, they may be drought-resistant plants, but they're not church-resistant plants. I think they need some help. <laughs> but we all need help, right? We all need, we all need Jesus in our lives. And, and so, um, so, so we talked about last week, the real start of this is have faith. We spent um, time talking about not worrying. Um, worrying is, a, is, is, um, is the opposite of faith. We spend a lot of times worrying about whether we're going to pay our bills, worrying about... Um, whatever stuff that goes on through our lives. But if we live our lives trusting in the Lord, we put our cares upon him, then we don't have to go through that spiral of, of doubt that worry creates and it affects our mood and affects the way we live our lives, right? So being a drought-resistant Christian is not the word. Uh, the, today we're going to talk about what God's filtering system is God you got to allow God to cleanse us. The, the, que the, the statement here says, being a drought-resistant Christian is to allow God's power to purify your life. Um, we, you know, like water, there's a filtering system for water. Um, there's a lot of toxins and so on and a lot of um, things that, um, that you probably... You know, we got a letter because of the drought at Sierra Madre. We ran out of, we had a big tank in our city. And we ran out of water from that tank. So we got a letter um, saying that they bought water from a different source. And, and it said, well, don't use it for your fish. If you're pregnant, don't drink your water. Um, it was all kinds of statements like that. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so anyways, we, um, water needs to be purified and filtered, but we ourselves also need to be purified. And through God's power, he can purify us. You know, we, we ourselves, just in our body, we have toxins through us, but not just like because of the food that you eat and the, and the things that you absorb through life, but also emotionally and spiritually, we have toxins that, that, that we need to be cleansed from, right? So, so let's get started. Did I pray yet? I need to pray. I told you I need a vacation, right? right? Well, anyway, let's start. Father Lord, thank you so much for, um, for your great love for us. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. And, and Lord, we live our lives. There's so much things that are in this world that we, that we absorb, we, we experience, and they affect us in, in negative ways. Father, we pray, Lord, that you just um, come into our hearts. Amen. Help us to be um, cleansed from the things that, that, um, that have affected us in a negative way and to be set free so we can um, live with, with purity in our lives. But guide us now. May the Holy Spirit just continue to teach us as we open your word. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right. 
So, first verse here. Oops. It says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. Ezekiel 36, 25. You know, I made a, a reference last, last week. If you're stressed out, um, you, you would, Calgon, take me away, right? How do you feel after you take a bath, right? Or a shower, particularly, right? A long day, you've been sweaty from, from the, the heat of the, of, the, of the sun. It's hot outside, and, and we have all this pollution that gets to our skin or stuff like that. Or you've been, you're working hard, um, you know, whatever. You're playing sports or whatever you do. You go and you take a nice shower, right? It just, you just feel cleansed, just so much better, right? Beautiful feeling, right? Beautiful feeling. But Jesus, here it says, God will sprinkle water and he will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. So to be a drought-resistant Christian, we, we have to let the water to, to purify us. Um, here, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, a large crowd followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Right? Here is this man with leprosy who knew what Jesus could do. That's something that we ourselves have to come to grips with. We may, we are, you know, we are, we're going to get into this later on, but we are so filled with junk from experiences of life. But we have to believe and trust that Jesus can make us clean. Amen. Then it says, Jesus reached out and touched, reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. You hear that? I am willing. Um, he said, and be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Um, that's the power of God. The power of God can make all things new. We all make mistakes in our lives. We all, we all have done um, bad things or whatever, but he can make all things new in our lives. And so we're to, what we're going to do now is talk about ways of what the steps of truly being cleansed and how we do. First of all, we need to cleanse our heart. It says, Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from our guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. First step of having been cleansed by God is, being, is drawing closer to him, drawing near to him, coming to him, just like the leopard, just being willing to go to God. A lot of us, we, we want to do things our own way. We want to fix our problems our own way, and we don't truly trust coming to him. Um, the second step is a good man, okay, how to be spiritually cleansed. Clean out your mouth. Right? Watch what you say. A good man brings good things out of good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of, out of, out of evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. All right, so it's not just bad words, you know. It's not just saying bad words. But also think about your language. Think about all the words that you say every day. What is, what is the tone of it? Is it negative? Is it critical, right? Um, that, the, that, that affects the way your being is. Um, so you have to... Look at yourself and think, be able to start talking positive towards people. Um, um, and because and, I see it all the time. I, I, I just listen to people talk and people are just always having a negative tone. And, and, um, and, and to be spiritually cleansed, 
um, it, it, it starts with your mouth. Um, and then it goes this. Renew your mind. Do not, Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform any longer to a pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God will, God's will is good, his good, play, pleasing, and perfect will. Do you know, I saw this statistic. By the time a child is eight years old, if he watches just regular non-educational shows, a child will see around 3,000 murders in his life on TV by the time he's eight years old, right? You know, sometimes I can't sleep at night. I'll turn on the TV, and I'll just like I watch it, and I'll watch a show, and, and then it will just kind of, whatever is going on would resonate into my dream, right? And if I'm watching an action show or something like that, or, or a murder or something like that, it will go into my subconscious, and it starts to, it starts to go into my, my, my thinking. We have, we have to realize the things that we see, the things that we watch, the things that we do, have, they affect our character in such negative ways, right? We have this guy who's being, um, who is um, being, I think he was sentenced to life. Was he um, the guy that, in Colorado that shot all the, right? He was sentenced to life, right? Something about him was, um, he was, he was dealing with some mental issues, but he was, loved gaming. He just loved to, um, to play video games and, and, and the violence of the video games. It just becomes part of his subconscious, right? So um, we, we have to, you th not only the things that we say, but the things that we come in, that we allow to, be, to, to take in. Um, what do you do with your time? How do you, how do you spend your time? What kind of TV shows do you watch? Uh, you might think it doesn't affect you. It does. It, it translates into your, your relationships with other people. It translates into the way you think. It translates into your, your character, and, 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 and it has a negative sense. But here in Romans 12, it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, if we want to be pure and, and set and cleansed, we, um, we have to remember that. Um, number four, repent. When I kept silent, my bones washed away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity, I said. I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and, I, and you forgave the guilt of my sins. Part of what holds us up back from truly experiencing the cleansing is that we are living, being overcome by our temptations. Um, we come to church and people ask you, how are you doing? And you all say, fine, right? Right? Um, but deep down inside, you know your heart. You know your struggles the battles that you have. And these hidden battles, these things that you're not really giving to the Lord, they are constantly keeping you from allowing God to, to, um, to purify you, to set you free. So that's number four. Number five, it says, release unforgiveness and bitterness. Ephesians 4, 31, 32, it says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, 
forgiving each one or each other as just as Christ God forgave you. Is that easy to do? It's not, is it? To release unforgiveness and bitterness. I mean, we've all had people do things that have hurt us, right? And we hold on to them because, you know, we don't want to be hurt again or we've, it's, it's, we've allowed it to just take a hold of us. And when we have this anger and this bitterness that's taking a hold of us, it's, it's only truly hurting ourselves, right? We're just allowing it to just um, continue to, to, to penetrate our being as, 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 as people and it's just continually allowing us to be controlled by it. But you do have a choice. We can live in being, having anger towards people. We can live with rage. You do have a choice. You may not feel like you have a choice, right? You're going on the freeway and someone cuts you off. I don't know how many times I use that analogy here in Los Angeles, <laughs> right? But you have, and you may feel like you've just been overcome with this rage, this anger. How could you do this? Even though I did that to someone a little while ago. <laughs> right? But how could you do this to me? Ah! You don't feel like you have control of yourself. But you do have control. You have control of your anger and your bitterness. It's not easy. It's not easy to do. But it is coming to God and allowing him to... Um, to, um, to, to change you. And the, the recipe of this is, look at it. It says, while you have this anger and this bitterness and rage, he's telling you here, be kind and compassionate to one another. A lot of people think, I just need to get it out, right? <laughs> right? I just need to get mad at someone, right? Even your therapist might say, you need to get mad at someone, Right? Right? But it doesn't, it, it, it isn't the solution, you know? All it does is it continues to facilitate hurt relationships and hurt, you know, pain in this world. If we can allow ourselves to live, be kind with each other and to love each other and to forgive each other when we make our mistakes, you know, because that's what Christ did for us. And he's, he's not telling us this, like, you have to do it, otherwise you're not going to heaven. He's saying this, this is how you are going to live a much better life, a life of happiness and of peace, right? You're going to enjoy yourself so much more if you're able to not have these resentments and hold on to them. And, you know, and we live in a culture, you got to conclude it, you know, with all these, with all the violence and so on and, 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 the, and the cultural um, environments that we live in where we have to do payback if someone messes you up, right? Right? That, that whole dynamic is just, it's, it's just killing you spiritually. It is killing you spiritually. time to put it to rest, right? Put it to rest. God wants you to have peace. God wants you to have love. Next week, we'll talk about God wanting us to have joy. But it, it comes with allowing ourselves to be cleansed by him. Number six. Involve Jesus in your daily life. God is faithful who has called unto you unto the fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, I remember this. I became a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I gave my life to God, and I looked at my big list of bad habits. And there was a bunch, right? And I'm like, I'm going to take that list, 
and I'm going to throw it away. Crumble it up, throw it away. Now what? <laughs> this is all. What am I going to do? Sit in a chair in a blank room for the rest of my life? <laughs> I don't know what to do with my life anymore. Right? Yeah! At Saturday night, what are you going to do? TV on, you want to watch TV, or you're going to hang out with your friends, or whatever you're going to do. Um, you, you decide you want to make a choice. You, you need to do something different in your life. You need to change it. You, you need to replace it with something. And my appeal here is replace this with Jesus. What I did is I started to get involved in church. I started to do ministry. There was this outreach thing that we did, like today, what we're going to do this afternoon. I started to, I started to um, just do whatever I could do to help other people and to spend time with God, right? You have to change it up. You have to change your life. The, your instinct, your routine is killing you. It's bad for you. You have to change it up. Spend time, give it to Jesus. Spend time with, ask him what his will for you, not your will. And you will, you will start doing what he tells you to do. And you'll start doing things that, will, that are helping you, that are uplifting you, not killing you. Right? And just because we're all like here at church and we're, we're you know, we're, you know, Christians and all, doesn't mean we're not affected by this world. We are. And more so than we should be. We're not, when we, you know, when you're watching the violence that you're watching on TV, don't think it just because you're a Christian it's not doing anything to you. It is. Um, and that's why we, we need this cleansing. It, and part six says, spend time with Jesus every day. And seven, how to be spend, spiritually cleansed. Learn to laugh at yourself and at life. Our mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it is said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. It's either laugh or cry, right? Right? It is. Part of the problem is we take ourselves too seriously. And, not, and God not serious enough. And so... Which is beautiful is, you know, we, we worship our, our God, and it, I mean, it shows what he wants from us. You know, what does God want from us? God wants us to have this joy, this love, this laughter, as, as I was talking about before. He wants us to experience the absolute most, the best. The world wants to bring us down. It does. Um, and, and so, but that was, that's what God is offering for us. So, a verse here, the last one, Titus 3, 5. It says, He saved us not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. Like I said, we've all made our mistakes. We're all filled with the toxins of the world. But he saved us, not because of the things we've done, but because he loves us, and he's incredible mercy upon us. And he saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewing by the Holy Spirit. How do we become drought-resistant Christians? Last week, it's by having faith in Jesus. It's trusting in him. Those that trust in man would dry up. Those who trust in God, he brings water into the roots. 
we continue on. It starts with faith, but it continues on as we behold him, as we hold on to him, to allow him to change, behold and become changed. Changes every aspect of us. We make choices to, to use better words towards each other. We make choices to, to do better things. We make choices to spend time with God. We make choices to not choose anger, but to be compassionate towards each other. We make choices to not hold on to our, 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 our debt, our, our, our resentments, our guilt. We give them to God. Because those things, they dry us up. They make our bones dry. They make us thirst. But, but God washes us, purifies us. Let us pray. Father, Lord, continue to work in our lives. Every day we make the same mistakes seemingly over and over again. Every day we, 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 we make those choices that keep, us, um, that, that keep us from you, Lord. But Father, help us to desire. Help us to desire to be pure, to be cleansed by you, Father. Allow you to just rain on us, Father. Like, like a shower where we're just, we're just all the toxins of this world and all the, of the spiritual toxins that are around us, Father, that we can be just washed free and cleansed. We can walk away from this sanctuary pure because we've given it to you, Lord. Which means we can start over. Uh, your enemy will remind us who we were, but Father, help us continue to remind us who we are, and that is your children. We are your children, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.